What's going on and welcome back to the good old boys YouTube channel today We're going to be replacing the front brake pads on the Hawk 250 So these are the original brake pads. They've been on here for 4,479 miles So the first step here that we're going to do is remove these two 12 millimeter bolts Once you have both bolts out, your whole caliper and assembly will kind of fall to the side. So next we're gonna remove the brake pads. All we need to do is flip this caliper over just like this. You'll see two Allen head bolts here and here. You need a number four or a four millimeter Allen wrench. So that's what the Allen bolt should look like. It's really a pin the second one so once the pins are out the pads are completely free so once you take the brake pads off you want to clean up the two pistons pretty obvious to see they're uh, chrome covered we'll clean these pistons up you want to clean these up because if you don't you can cause yourself a leak so you want to just make sure you wipe these clean before you press them back into the caliper here show you guys the brake pads so you can actually see we had just a teeny tiny little bit of pad left this one here has a little on the bottom side but it's all metal so yeah it was time to change these out so once your pistons are cleaned up you're going to take one of your old brake pads put it right back in there then you need a good old c-clamp like this all we're doing is pushing the pistons back to where they need to go can see that I pushed this piston in and the other piston is still sticking out all right now we're gonna put the clamp on this side clamp it down so the pistons are pushed all the way back to where they need to go now I can show you guys this little spring a bit better so we'll pull it out of there to show you guys get a real close-up shot so this would be the outward facing part of the caliper, it goes right on the bike like that. This is the back side. So we're looking down in here like this. This is what your spring looks like. So keep in mind this piece right here with the two uh, flanges or whatever you want to call these, they grab onto this ridge down in here. So if you're putting this back on, if it fell out, if you need the orientation, the piece that grabs on to the center part goes towards the back just like this i'll show you real quick just putting it back in here again the part that grabs on goes towards the back just like that now this part doesn't require any kind of lubrication so all i'm doing here is just basically wiping all the grit and grime off of this part the part that grabs onto the caliper goes towards the back so you just put that in there and it should just pop on just like that you can see how it sits in there and it shouldn't fall out it should be held in there all righty guys while we're cleaning stuff up we're going to go ahead and re-grease these sliders so you can see how this kind of works slider moves from side to side as your brake pads wear down and as it needs to so it basically just pops out of there just like that so we're going to set this aside for now what I like to do is take an Allen wrench and dip it in some grease like this. And where the sliders go, I'll actually fill the hole with grease. Now, of course, we're going to take the actual pins themselves and put some grease on them just like this. No need to worry about which way to put this back together. It'll only go back together one way. Sliding these pins back in here right where they go. Alrighty guys, so now it's time to put some brake pads on here. So I've got a couple options for you guys. We'll just try and make it simple. So these two sets of brake pads right here, they can't come as one set. So the bonus to this is that you have a set of front brake pads and a set of rear brake pads. Now you do have to trim this small piece off of here, but it's very simple. You can cut it off with a grinder, Sawzall, whatever you want. So I'll leave you guys the link to those in the description box below. 
There's also this set of pads, which was $7 off of Amazon. As you can see, these are the same exact brake pads. One thing to consider, if you do get the uh, front and rear set of brake pads, there is a left and right side. This side here is gonna be for your rear brakes. So pay close attention here. Um, you see how the brake pad material is uh, on this side of the shoe and the metal is on this side. So this is for the rear. Now on the front brake pads, it's gonna be the opposite. So the brake pad material is on the opposite side. So if I put these back to back just like this, you guys can see the difference. Um, and if I put them this way, you can see the difference. So they're a mirror image of each other. So again, the brake pads that look like this are for the rear. The brake pads that look like this are for the front. And again, you just have to trim this small piece off of there. So it's really simple to trim this extra piece off of here. So I'm just gonna show you guys real time how quick you can do this. And again, the benefit to this setup here is that you get both of these sets of pads for 11 or $12. And you got a set of pads that fits the rear and a set of pads that fits the front now. So there is one other thing that I forgot to mention to you guys. Now you can see, if you look at these pads, the actual pad or braking surface is about half of what the pad is on uh, these eBay pads as well. So I feel like you're gonna get a lot more life out of these eBay pads. These pads I got from Amazon. So we'll call these the eBay pads and these the Amazon pads. But again, you have about half of the breaking material on these pads compared to these eBay pads. So now it's time to actually put the pads in the caliper here. I'm kind of leaning towards these eBay pads in the future. But again, I'll leave you guys the link to both of these pads in the description box below. Remember, these are the Amazon pads and these would be the eBay pads. Again, seven or eight dollars for this one set of front pads or 10 or 11 dollars for both of these pads so first of all we want to start simple we'll take one pin you want to put nic's on the whole pin the next part here is kind of tricky so all you're doing is you have the spring down in there that wants to push these pads out so you need to push the pad down and push this pin in through there this back pad specifically is a little tricky but you can see exactly kind of what I did there and the pin should slide in till the threads touch it's time for the next pin here you can see it's rusty so it really needed this anti-seize now we take our caliper and again same thing on this side you're gonna have to push these pads downwards counteract that spring and your pin will just slide right in there like that again, all the way to the threads. At this point, it really doesn't matter. You can go ahead and torque down your pins. What I'll do is get these a little more snug than you normally would for a normal bolt, and that ensures that they're not gonna back out. But you don't want them too tight to the point where you strip them out or to where you can't get them out the next time. So at this point, we can go ahead and clean off any excess NICs or grease. The only thing we have left is these last two bolts. So when you're going to put the caliper back on here, you want to make sure you have a good space between the pads. As you can see, we do here. Now, if everything is right, you might have to wiggle it a little bit, but you should be able to get your caliper on here fairly easily, just like that. So for the last two bolts, uh, these two, you may or may not want to grease. Um, I always grease everything that I'm working on, whether it's brakes or whatever. All I'm gonna do is stick this bolt in here, get it started. Now these bolts are the same as anything else on this bike. A lot of people have issues with bolts falling out constantly, um, but if you tighten these down correctly, you're not gonna have any issues. So like I said, I'd rather be able to get these bolts out and have them fall out than to not be able to get them out at all. So anytime you're doing a job like this, uh, especially 
brake work, front brakes, you need to come back uh, probably in 10, 20, 30, 50 miles and just check periodically, make sure none of your bolts are backing out, make sure the pins aren't backing out, stuff like that. So it's not a job where you just put it together and let it go. You need to, of course, check on it and make sure everything is still good uh, several miles down the road. So I've got one last tip to wrap this video up and that's that everybody needs to remember anytime you do brake work, you need to pump your brakes up just like this. And uh, once they are firm again, your brakes are ready to go. You don't wanna get going down the road and forget to pump these up because you'll grab a handful of front brake and there'll be nothing there. So yeah. So of course the last thing to do here is test these brakes out. So we're gonna see what they'll do. it guys you can see the brake pads are working really well in conclusion here i really got to recommend the ebay pads that's what i am personally going to go with next time kind of curious what you guys would go with let us know in the comment section below whether you'd go with the amazon brake pads or the ebay brake pads don't forget to rate comment and subscribe check out that description box below remember that's where all the information on the brake pads is going to be and we'll catch you guys on the next video Woo!